Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's Verdi and again, on my way to get this pain in the ass stereo system checked out. <laughs> it's been a hell of a deal just trying to find a professional, and I don't even know if this guy's a pro. It's, they're supposed to be pros, I guess we'll find out. Um, I assume they are. Uh, they were working on copper cars, uh, the Popo police cars, uh, so hopefully, uh, I, I mean, he already told me there wasn't much information on this system out there, which we all know is, we all already know. So hopefully he can figure it out and try to get me uh, an idea for a setup for a system, uh, proper amps, DSP, hookups, etc., etc., and I'll pass on whatever I learned from him to you guys. Uh, and then I'll probably set up and have him install it and then tune it. I'd really like to get good time alignment on these speakers so I can get a good sound out of this car. Uh, he also suggested we might have to delete the center speaker. I don't care. Center speaker can go away. It's annoying as hell anyway. Uh, three and a half inch speaker blasting 90% of the music is just freaking stupid. It's fine at lower volumes, but uh, when you start playing at high volumes, uh, it's a, it, it rips what little enamel I have left on my teeth out. And I think this phone is going to fall because this holder is not holding very well lately. But I just wanted to keep you guys up to touch what's going on. Uh, very excited about today because at least I'm finally moving forward. Maybe I can get this car stereo uh, in gear so I can start driving uh, Ruby to work again. I got the lady of the house in the car along with the Impasta Wawa who's sitting here on her lap. And the Beagle in the back, which none of you guys can see right now. So, But she's there. But she's there. And she's chilling. And, of course, I'm driving off the road like a moron. So, I will get back with you guys. I'll try to give you all the information I learn. And we'll see you in a bit. Now, at this time, they are checking tones on everything. And um, we'll see how it turns out. Uh... Just doing this for my own notes, so I know what to say later when we get here. My eyes are all red because of the drops. These guys are obviously real professionals because they're talking about mixes and components and all sorts of funny stuff. I don't know how detailed I'm going to be able to get in this video, but just so you guys know, we are having a look at. Well, as usual, this is going to be a little off the cuff. Um, I try to tell you about some of my impressions. Now, I don't have anything installed yet. <clears throat> I'm also going to intersperse this with some video of a little bit more of the dynamatting that we did in the trunk before and after and some of the other designs that were going on. Now, I'm going a little overboard on this system. Excuse my red eyes. Uh, my eyes are very red mostly because... Well, I found out I have high pressure in my eyes and I might have, uh, might be developing glaucoma. So I have to use drops and they make my eyes red. So I look like I've been smoking the hookah 24-7. Uh, I don't smoke the hookah anymore. I used to. I don't do it anymore, but I look like I have. Well, I went to this installer, this new uh, radio installer. Um, I like this guy. Uh, he's very direct and honest. Uh, he doesn't mind using other people's uh, components. He's very open to using other people's components. He'll tell you what you got, what's going on, and so forth. So let me tell you what I have learned about this system so far. First of all, on the touring, and I'm going to assume with the other ones, and the tour, it really is 10 full channels on this system. They have 10 full outputs coming out of the uh, amplifier. Uh, so we are dealing with 10 full channels. They may not be having all the, uh, you know, all the spectrum in all the channels, obviously, like the center and all that. But there are 10 full channels, including the sub, which is the 10th. Uh, so we do have to keep that in mind. So it, it is a bit of a very, it's a beast to deal with. It'll be a little easier for all of you with eight channels uh, on your EX models. Obviously, you can add a sub by uh, using the LC2i, which is a line converter, which also has, uh, has the bass capability to, to recover bass that's missing in the system that the system rolls off to keep, your, uh, keep from blowing speakers, cheap garbage speakers. Um, with my system, we're going to keep 
I'm gonna keep a, a separate mini amp. I have a mini amp which I'm using uh, an audio control. The uh, I believe it's the LC 1.300. Uh, it pushes about 175 watts, uh, and I'm running it in four ohm. You can run it in two ohm and get 300, but 175 is more than enough, and I don't want to burn out that. It's just an eight inch uh, sub. I'm trying to keep everything in the deck. I don't want to put a physical sub in the car. I really don't want to do that right now if I can help it. If I have to to get the sound better, by all means, I'll do it. I am going overboard on this. So I'm going to try to ask more questions when I see him. I'm probably going to see him either Wednesday or Thursday of this week to get the install done. Grand total, $2,000. What's the fucking cost? That's the bitching part about it. It don't matter. If you can't afford it, fucking finance it. We'll get into that in a second. The grand total of just what he's doing, not of everything I've done. I'm a complete lunatic. Uh, but, you know, I only li you only live once, and I don't think I'm going to be around long, so I'm going to do it because I want nice sound. What I'm doing with my system is I'm doing full time alignment of all the speakers. Basically, I'm going to have every single speaker time aligned to my seating position exactly where I am. Uh, he's recommended, and I'm going to try to put a picture of the amp here, the Audison uh, Forza Amplifier. Uh, it's an 8.9, so it has a built-in DSP, Fucking multiple finance. channels, eight channels, not 10. Now, we're going to keep that one for the sub. Now, I don't know what he's doing with the center. We're going to find out what we're going to do with the center afterwards. I think he has a way to roll the center into the system as well, so it won't be a problem, or we'll delete it. I'll let you know a little bit more. I'm also going to try to interview him a little bit with some information. I just try to get some answers to you guys. If you guys have any questions, ask him now as soon as possible, and I will try to ask him if I can. Uh, with a system like that, the reason he recommend Audison twofold, he said, I could use my audio control stuff. And I looked into all of the audio. With the audio control, I would need the DSP. I would need one, two amps to push all the channels because there's, uh, there's not a DSP that pushes all the channels. I need a minimum of eight channels push. Minimum. Um, and then I would have my little mini amplifier for the sub. With the Audison... I got one amplifier. Um, it's push it. It's got the DSP. It's got all eight channels, nine channel output for for um, for the DSP. So I don't see any reason to putz around with it. Uh, I'd rather have that single one with the single small uh, audio control mini amp for my sub uh, rather than having uh, one, two, three, four total boxes in there. I can have just two. Uh, and I'd rather do that. Another thing he said is that he can do the time alignment and he can do the settings and so forth. But if I use the audio control, which he said is good, he, he doesn't have any problem with it. And he'll use all your equipment. That's another thing I like about this guy. He says he'll only be able to tune with, with their programs that they give him. With the Audison, he actually have the mics and all the equipment that's made to tune with Audison amplifiers. So he's got that professional equipment, I don't know, it's eight, nine hundred dollars, whatever, that he puts inside your car and it listens to everything and time aligns everything. This is not what all of you are really looking to do. It's a little bit much. I'm going all out. Uh, not super all out. If I'm super all out, I would think you could put twenty, thirty thousand dollars into a system easily Fucking to finance. try to make it like competition grade. I'm not doing that. I just want good sound. And if I do it, I might as well get really good sound if I can help it. Um He told me for all of those that have maybe changed their speakers and, you know, everything's fine, but that center channel is too loud. Uh, you could use a two-channel LOC, uh, line output converter, connect it between the output um, of the speaker and the amplifier. <clears throat> By doing that, be able to tone down that center channel if that channel is just getting too screechy or loud for you. I don't understand exactly how it does it. The man's talking about sine waves. That's way beyond me, guys. Way beyond me. I've been trying to get you guys as much info as I can so you guys can at least approach professionals with some knowledge uh, or some ideas or even get working on it yourself. One thing is you cannot take the amplifier out of this car, at least not yet. Uh, and the amplifier has to be plugged in uh, from the head unit to the amp. Apparently, the amp has a lot of stuff that talks to the head unit as part of the radio. You unhook that, the system won't work. Um, there's nothing to go in between uh, in between that. You have to go after the amps out, outputs. So the system is definitely uh, doable. Oh, sorry, I'm exhausted. System is definitely doable, but you have to do it after 
the outputs. Uh, I told him my concern uh, about, uh, I, I actually had this amplifier overheat on me. It was like 95 degrees outside. But, you know, the amplifier is in the floor of the car, inside the car. It's got its own heat, uh, it's got its own um, heat sink on it. And you figure with the air conditioning blowing, it would stay cool. I was playing, and I had to turn it all the way up to like 37. It just wasn't making enough noise. I couldn't hear it. And boom, everything went out. No volume. Uh, none of my guide noises would go off. Nothing would go off. And I stopped uh, at my friend, and he pulled all the fuses. None of the fuses were blowing. Put it back in, and everything started working again. So I don't know uh, what happened. I think it just overheated. Um, I was told uh, I heard a pop inside the car. Again, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, having a, I'm having an allergy attack here. <laughs> Uh, or a pop, but I think that what happened is I think the amplifier overheated and shut itself and put it, in, it went into safety mode, cooled down, and it worked fine after that. I had worries about it. I said, look, I want to make sure I can put plenty of volume out of the amplifier, the secondary amplifier, and I don't want much in here, so I want it toned as low as down. He said basically what he does is, is they send basically a signal to the amp, so the amp knows it's plugged in and running, but it's not really going to be pushing much power at all. All the power is going to be coming from the Audison. Now, the Audison is going to be pushing about 85 watts a channel. Uh, it doesn't seem like much, but it should be more than enough for inside a car, and it'll be much cleaner uh, uh, sound than what's coming out of the current system. <clears throat> the man doesn't uh, doesn't really want to do any filming. Uh, he has a very small bay to work in, and I think that's just because I think he's worried about me tripping over him. And he's very personable. Uh, it, 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 the, the, the name of the company is Complete Mobile <clears throat> here in Maine. And uh, I'll put information on it after I get the... Uh, I'll put the name here, but I'm going to put in more information on it later to let you know what it's really about. Um, but he seems like a good pro, and he's an easy person to talk to. Uh, another thing... As I said, it's off the fly, so I can't remember half the, say, half the stuff I was going to say. Um, he said my speaker choice was okay. N for, for volume, he would have preferred something different. Again, Audison, but I can't afford those kind of speakers. I, I have to get some kind of money. I, wor I also worked out the cost of all the audio control stuff, and after that, plus the cost for him to install and set it up, which would have been a couple of hundred dollars more for him to do it with the uh, audio control because you're involving two extra amps and a DSP all separate to be all hooked into the system. The price difference is $300 for installation and setting it up. Uh... So it would have been $1,700 rather than 2000 to have four boxes rather than just two there. So I'm going to go to the Artisan, and we're going to find out how that goes, and I'll let you know how that goes. I'm also going to try to get more questions answered for all you guys who don't want to do time alignment. You just want to amplify your speakers better. Um, so we're going to do that. One other thing I found out, he said we really need to keep the ANC unplugged. Whether it seems like it's better whether or not, it isn't. He said the problem with the ANC is that even though with us touring models, it expects a boom from a sub, he says you're dealing with a much better sub now and it's pushing out much different sound frequencies. Uh, and the ANC is going to screw around with the sound frequencies, whether you like it or not. It may not even make that 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 whine or, or buzz a lot of people say they get with their ANCs, especially in the EXs, since the EX is not designed to have the sub originally. Um, but... He said it will manipulate the sound improperly. So it's uh, it's bad news on that. So no ANC. The ANC has to stay disconnected. Um, so I do apologize. I don't have more information for you here. Uh, you wish me at verdier400gmail.com with any of your questions. Um, you can leave it in the comments. I'll check those before I go. But just in case you have any questions, we'll try to pass it on to the guy. I'm going to try to talk this guy into opening up his own YouTube channel because... It's hard to find him, and, and, and he really should pass some of this. You know, he doesn't have to pass all the secrets, but pass some of this information out so he can he can push his brand. Although he, he seems plenty busy. He's always a week out. Uh, he says he's been dealing with systems that had like 20-plus channels on them. Uh, holy crap. Uh, 20 channels? It, it said that some of these systems are incredibly complex. But Honda's actually giving you 10 full channels. He said they're complete channels. Um, so what I'm going to do going active, I'm going to be taking out the passive, um, crossovers that came with the kickers and we're going to go all active. Every speaker is going to be active. 
all through the amp. And the amp is going to time align everything. Everything's going to be set to time align for these fat, ugly ears that don't hear worth a shit. And that's where we're at. Um, I'm going to continue to try to get more information. I'm going to see if I can get some filming snuck in if he'll let me. I'm hoping he will. Um, if worse comes to worse, and I still can't get enough information even after we've done the install and everything, I'm going to have my friend, he's probably going to pull things apart and look at it and see if he can explain what he saw. See, he's just, like I said, he's he's very smart, very very clever guy, but he's still new. He understands the technology and ideas, but he doesn't know how to bypass some of the stuff because he doesn't have the experience. And he wants to see what the system looks like when it's done. So this is Verdier signing out for tonight. And I hope this video helps you guys a little bit. Probably doesn't, but I hope it does. And we're still going to try to move forward to make this system sound good and to help you guys get a good system uh, in Honda's <clears throat> 10 and 8 channel systems. Take care, you guys, and I will talk to you later. Fucking finance it!